Welcome to another moment in the Word. Have you been hurt? Have you been injured by someone? Has someone deeply injured you? And if that be the case, how have you responded to them? What's your attitude toward them? Do you recycle those thoughts over and over, how they've hurt you? How they have injured you in some way? Well, that's what our Lord is dealing with. He's dealing with offenses, offenses that have been committed against us and how to resolve them. But Peter responds by saying, Lord, how many times do we need to be injured and then to forgive? And then Jesus gives this parable, a parable that's extremely important, very poignant, and also very personal. The first is a uh, parable of a, of a man who had owed an incredible amount of money. In fact, he owed, uh, we find, uh, so much that it would take a quarter of a million years to pay it back. That's incredible. Well, that man is forgiven. And now the forgiven man has someone that owes him. And that's what we're looking at today. You've been forgiven, maybe a child of God. You've acknowledged the blood of Christ has paid the debt of your sin. So now how do you respond to somebody that has injured you? We find this in verse 28 through verse 30. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me all that you owe. And his fellow servant fell down on his feet and besought him, saying, Have mercy, have patience with me, and I'll repay unto you all. And he would not, but went out and cast him into the prison till he should pay the debt. Oh, this is an incredible passage. The first words that we find in the Greek are not but that same servant. Instead, it's went out. In other words, he went out. He went out from where? From the presence of the king. He was in the presence of the king, who is, we find in the last verse of this chapter, a picture of God himself. It is John who writes, they went out from us, for they were not of us. For if they were of us, they for sure would have continued with us. To go out is to go out from the fellowship. We find that also in the upper room on the last time of our Lord with his disciples. At the Last Supper, Judas is given the best part of the matzah, the bread, and then he goes out. My dear one, Stay in the fellowship of our Lord. And if you're in the fellowship of our Lord, you're in his grace. And it is by grace that he has already been forgiven. But there's a deliverance. He goes out. And he goes out, and what is he going to do? He found one. The word in the Greek is really wonderful. And you're familiar with it. It is the word you get, your English word, eureka. I found it. Well, that's so different than what you see back earlier when in verse 24, he himself was brought. It was brought because the king was doing a, an accounting, was, was doing an audit, and they found, they discovered that he had owed a great amount of money. In this case, he leaves the presence of the king to now go and find. He is seeking after this one that owes him. Now, why is that? As we look, we see verse 26. He says to the king, I will pay all. Well, if he thinks he can pay all, even though it's an incredible amount, it would be again a quarter of a million years that he would have to earn it, then he is presumptuous. There's no gratitude. There's no thanksgiving for what God has done for him. Instead, he finds a fellow servant. That implies it's a brother. It's, it's a fellow slave. He's no different than this man that he is going and accosting. In fact, he is an equal. And so consequently, he finds his fellow servant who owed him 
and it's in the imperfect. That means it, it was a debt that was still outstanding, and maybe this is how he's going to pay off how much he owes. He's going to find and exact all those that owe him. And so he finds this man that owes him, but what he owes him is a hundred denarii. Now, that's so different because a talent is a weight. It's 75.6 pounds in the English uh, or the American measurement. And so consequently, that to be compared to a denarii, it would take 6,000 denarii to equal one talent. This man owes 10,000 talents, and he's going after somebody that owes him only, and notice now, it's not one talent, it's only a few denarii. In fact, the amount would be four days' work that he would owe. This is incredible, isn't it? What a difference. But look at yourself. Have you been hurt by others? Remember, hurt people hurt people. But if your hurt has been given to the Lord and he has healed you and he thereby not only healed you, but replaced that heart within you of seeking vengeance to now seeking mercy. Remember what James says, mercy rejoices against judgment. If you have mercy, you have the heart of God. If you're seeking vengeance, then you have the characteristic of Satan. He's the one who is bringing others before the Lord, remember, day and night, accusing the brethren. And so now he comes, and this man, he owes him a hundred denarii. Now he lays hands on him. Literally, he grabs him. And notice how violent he is. The king didn't do that to him. Instead, he grabs him, he takes him, and the word for take is also in the imperfect. It means it's an ongoing action. He's dragging him, and what is happening? Well, he's taking him by the throat. And you say, that's cruel. But you see, that was the custom in the Roman days, that a man was allowed to take a creditor was allowed to take a debtor, take them by the throat. Sometimes they would be bloodied and they would bring them before the tribunal. And that was accepted. And in this world, there is that kind of vengeance, that kind of brutality, that kind of cruelty where the world wants to exact justice without mercy. God is merciful. And so we find now he comes and he demands, you pay me what you owe. Oh, you pay him? Well, he owed so much, remember? And we owe so much. It's the comparison between what we owe God for our sin and seeing how great that is and then looking at somebody that has injured us. What's the comparison? The way in which this person can come and focus on that person's injury is that we don't understand our own depravity. We don't understand the depth of the sin that we have committed against God. The more we understand God, the more we understand his grace, the more we humble ourselves and broken in contrition before God for our sin. And the more we understand that, the more merciful we become. Isn't it interesting that in the Beatitudes, we begin with those who are poor in spirit, recognizing we can do nothing that is pleasing to God, that will glorify God. And then we come down to the fifth Beatitude, blessed are the merciful. I can't be merciful unless I recognize that I can and I don't have the capacity to please God or glorify him, and that I mourn for my sin. If I mourn for my sin, then I realize what I have done is far worse than what anybody could do to me. And therefore, what God has done for me is far greater than any I could do for another. But if I'm a child of God, then I have to behave like him. As Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1, be imitators of God as dear children. And the first characteristic he outlines in that chapter is to love, to love as God loves. That's what we see in this passage. 
He is calling us to love as he, and he's using now this this servant, this wicked servant who has been forgiven, but now is exacting cruelty on another. And notice he put now the fellow servant, the one who owes so much to his fellow servant, falls down on his feet and he besought him. Well, falling down at his feet is exactly what the servant that was first forgiven did. And he besought him. The first servant worshipped because there's a difference. You don't worship people. You don't worship those that you owe. And nor do we expect those that owe to us or have injured us to worship us. It's not about us. It's about him. And then he says, have patience. It is this idea that we are long-suffering. That is exactly what he has uh, said the the servant in the beginning, the first servant, is cried out to God, be merciful and be long-suffering, be patient. We're asking, this man is now asking of the first servant, be patient, I will pay the all. But notice how this servant responds. He isn't patient and he isn't caring. Our God responds out of his, and it's literally in the Greek, out of his guts. We say it's a visceral reaction, that it's from the bowels of mercy. In other words, God in his very heart of hearts and in his very emotions toward us has been merciful toward you. But this man, notice verse 30, and he would not. And the word is also in the imperfect. The word would. It's a verb. And it means of the heart. Thelo. It, it is the idea that he has decided it's his will, not God's will. It's his desire, not God's desire. God's desire is that none should perish. And this man's desire is that this man should perish. Why? Because he had done something. That the, What he has done is very small compared to his offense against God. So as you look at your offense against God, is it great? Do you call yourself the chief of sinners like the Apostle Paul? If so, then you'll be merciful toward those who have offended you, won't you? But if you, on the other hand, you think you're a good person? You think you haven't done that much bad? Then you are going to exact on others and judge them and punish them and be cruel to them. It's also interesting, isn't it, that weak and wicked leaders often exert coercion and cruelty? This man is weak. It takes compassion. That evidences a strong leader a strong person, being merciful. Love overcomes a multitude of sins. Not your sins, but the sins of others in our attitude toward them. We want to be like God. He has put his spirit in you so that you can love as he loved. You can forgive as he has forgiven you. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Father, again for the conviction your word brings to us. And again and again and again, we're drawn short. We are aware of the fact that we don't love like you love and that we don't forgive like you forgive. And yet, Father, that's what you require of us. So we ask, Father, there might be less of us and more of you. We pray that, Father, you might increase, that we decrease. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.